So I don't know if you saw our other video where Michael Moore lays out in perfect detail about why Trump voters that he knows personally from Michigan were going to vote for Trump and what it had to do with and how it wasn't uh, this racist narrative that everybody reads into this election, even though there's certainly racism a part of Trump's appeal to some people. Michael Moore wrote this. uh, It's called Burning Down the House, A Crime Beyond Denunciation. He wrote this in October 21st, 2010. That's important because it shows you how, I mean, Michael, this is an amazing column because he predicts Donnie Tonahans. This is back in 2010. And so we're going to take it to, so he's talking about, in this uh, article, he's talking about the Wall Street meltdown and the pathetic response to it and how the elite bankers who run our economy and run our culture and run our country run our politicians they run everything uh how they respond to crisis and uh and he makes a parallel with the grapes of wrath so here we he says so how do the wall street boys feel after destroying this has been 2010 he wrote this how do they feel after destroying the world economy while pocketing billions and then getting bailed out by everyone else in america i'm sure they're filled with remorse and desperately trying to make it up to us right see that was by the way a big problem why Barack Obama is a failure because Barack Obama didn't do anything to fix the banking system in America. Oh, we did Dodd Frank. <laughs> he didn't break up the banks. He didn't prosecute anybody, which means fraud will continue. Hey, guess what? Fraud's continuing on Wall Street. They just had to fire 5,000 people from Wells Fargo for committing fraud against their own goddamn customers. Why? Because Barack Obama didn't prosecute anybody in Wall Street for crimes. Hey, the new CIA uh, chief that Donnie Tinehans is appointing says he's all for waterboarding and worse. Why? Because Barack Obama never prosecuted anybody. Because he's a tool. And he didn't do anything. He didn't pro- You know who he did prosecute? He prosecuted journalists who exposed war crimes inside of our government. That's who Barack got the balls to prosecute. Not one Wall Street motherfucker. Not one. Not one guy who ordered torture. Not one guy who ordered an illegal war. Nothing. So here he is talking about Wall Street. And uh, how do they feel? Trying to make it up to us. So he... He reads from, uh, this is from an article back then from the New York Observer, which is, he says, is the newspaper for rich people. This is from that newspaper. He says, the first thing that needs to happen, I think, is to get these people out of their homes. A man wearing a bespoke blue striped shirt, a Hermes tie pattern with elephants and Ferragamo loafers said recently. So he's describing a super, super rich banker he's wearing a bespoke blue striped shirt a hermes tie pass so these are all very so he that guy that banker says the first thing that needs to happen i think is to get these people out of their homes americans get them out of their homes where are you gonna go who cares kick them out of their house Correct. I'll explain the veteran member of a bank restructuring and advisory team said Correct. I'll explain. A a veteran member said, the question to me is not, do you foreclose or do you not foreclose? The question is when and with what philosophy you foreclose, the man on the bank restructuring team said. So these are the guys who created this system pocketed billions of dollars while they set it up and now as it's crashing and it's coming down on the poorest people in america homeowners who can't afford to make their mortgage payments anymore there this is what their response is not let's try to help them hey let's try to fuck them up faster I think it's nice how he likes to pretend that he has a philosophy yeah that's... of his criminal activity yeah if you want to reduce the amount of leveraged homeowners you have, you need the ult- you need to ultimately kick them out of their homes. If you want to reduce So so what he's saying is he wants to reduce the supply of houses. Well, here it is. 
a colleague walked up. His recommendation was to burn houses. It would lower the supply. That's from a a new article about Wall Street in the New York Observer, the newspaper for Manhattan's richest people. Remember, Michael Moore wrote this in 2010. He's shown you the moral bankruptcy of Wall Street. Complete. Not only criminal, they're criminal, of course. We know they're criminal. If if you know anything about what happened, you know that was Wall Street set up an economic system based on fraud. And if you don't want to read, go see the movie The Big Short, and that'll tell you how they did it. So it's a movie says, hey, the whole thing's based on fraud. Everybody who invented Matt Taibbi, anybody who's written about it, hey, it's all based on fraud. Robert Shearer, everybody who's written about it, hey, this is a thing based on fraud. Nobody got prosecuted? No, it's a, we live in a lawless society. There's there's law and order for poor, for the poor, but for the rich, do whatever the fuck you want. So uh, it goes on. It is because, so he asked the question, so here it is. He, so Michael Moore says, here we are. We have people who need houses, and we have a glut of houses, and what does the banker want to do? He doesn't want to maybe figure out a system where we have the people who need houses find houses that are available. No, he wants to immediately get rid of the houses that are available to drive up the prices of the houses that are left over. Because what the fuck is the point of anything unless you can make a profit from it? This isn't about helping people, building a country, building a society. No, this is about greedy, criminal psychopaths because let's we all know that more psychopaths work on Wall Street than anywhere else in the world. Literal psychopaths, literal. And he says, isn't that insane to do that, to want to burn down houses when we... And he says it is. He says it's because capitalism is insane. It doesn't matter that we have a giant oversupply of something and a giant number of people who desperately need that specific thing. The only thing that matters is, can this something be sold for a profit? If not, the obvious solution is to reduce the supply by setting it on fire. And maybe this will create a business opportunity for the Koch brothers to sell tissues to America's newly homeless as they watch the empty houses burn down. And then he says, this is almost exactly what was written in the Grapes of Wrath. And he goes on to quote the Grapes of Wrath. Watch this. This is from the Grapes of Wrath. The works of the roots of the vines, of the trees, must be destroyed to keep up the price. And this is the saddest, bitterest thing of all. That's right from the Grapes of Wrath. The works of the roots of the vines of the trees must be destroyed to keep up the price. And this is the saddest, bitterest thing of all. Carloads of oranges dumped on the ground. The people came from miles around to take the fruit. But this could not be. How would they buy oranges at 20 cents a dozen if they could drive out and pick them up? And men with hoses squirt kerosene on the oranges. And they are angry at the crime, angry at the people who have come to take the fruit. A million people hungry, needing the fruit, and kerosene sprayed over the golden mountains. There is a crime here that goes beyond denunciation. There is a sorrow here that weeping cannot symbolize. There is a failure here that topples all our success. The fertile earth, the straight tree rows, the sturdy trunks, and the ripe fruit and children dying of pellagra must die because a prophet cannot be taken from an orange. And coroners must dill in the certificates died of malnutrition because the food must rot, must be forced to rot. In the souls of the people, the grapes of the wrath, the grapes of wrath are filling and growing heavy, growing heavy for the vintage. So that's from the Grapes of Wrath. They literally would put kerosene on the oranges while people were starving because they can't help people have oranges if you can't make a profit off it. 
And that's exactly the same motherfuckers that are running Wall Street right now today. Those are the same guys who Obama filled his cabinet with. Those are the people Obama, Barack Obama surrounded himself with. That's the Timothy Geithners. That's your your uh, Lawrence Summers, your Rubens. And here's how he concludes the article, Michael Moore. Here's how he concludes the article. So let me just say this, by the way. There's such great writing. There is a crime here that goes beyond denunciation. There is a sorrow here that weeping cannot symbolize. Apply this to what they did on Wall Street. As they kicked veterans out of their house. As they kicked people with jobs out of their house. People with kids. My brother... My brother had a job. He needed a job. And he got a job. He was one of those guys who would go with the sheriff, go to people's houses, and kick them out. He would go to people's apartments and kick them out of their apartment. And one day he showed up at someone's apartment, and there were three little girls there, and they were crying, and they were saying, please, my daddy paid the rent. He said he paid the rent. And my brother quit that day. There was a sheriff in, in Chicago right around this time who said, I'm not kicking anybody out of their apartments anymore. Why? Because this, the landlord didn't pay the rent. These people paid their rent. The landlord didn't pay the mortgage. These people paid their rent. I'm not kicking anybody out. What a decent thing for a, for a law enforcement officer to do. And that's what we need. As soon as the cops realize that they're one of us, and they're not one of them, that after they're done with us, they're coming for them, that's when this all turns around. So if those guys up at Standing Rock actually turned around and faced the criminals, which are the guys who are drilling, those are the criminals because they don't even have the permits and they're doing it anyway. So if the cops really turned around and faced the real criminals, which are those guys working on the oil pipeline, things would change quickly. Like they did in New Jersey at the camp. Guess what they did at the camp in New Jersey? They fired all the police. Oh, because of the budget, we got a bad budget. Oh, you're not going to have police? Oh, we're going to have police. Where are you going to get them? We're going to hire them all back without a union. We're going to use the county police, and we're going to hire all those guys back and, and in the county, but non-union. So once the cops realize that as soon as they're done with us, they're coming for them, that's when things can turn around. Uh, so when he says there is a sorrow here that weeping cannot symbolize, there is a failure here that topples all our success. So that's what I feel about the, the way America handled Wall Street. That there is a failure here that topples all of whatever success Barack Obama thinks he has. The failure to handle that led to Donald Trump. Because people were waiting for people to be prosecuted. People were waiting for banks to, banks to be broken up. People were waiting for the government to come help them save their homes. None of that shit ever happened. Barack Obama saved the banks for sure. He certainly didn't sell, save people's homes. He certainly didn't save their jobs. In fact, they prosecuted people for filling out bank loan forms illegally. Meanwhile, the whole goddamn system was one big fucking crime. But they only prosecuted poor people without resources. That's Barack Obama's justice system. And you tell me that motherfucker isn't a complete failure and a partly a monster? You're wrong. Here's how Michael Moore ends the article. And this is why I wanted to show this to you. I know I buried the lead, right? He says, the Democrats, led by Franklin D. Roosevelt and pushed by unions, harvested the Depression's grapes of wrath and created with them the foundation of the middle class of America. And someone's going to harvest 2010's grapes of wrath. But it doesn't have to be us. In fact, if you're like me, you're getting worried about who it might be. Guess who that person was? It was Donnie Tanahans Trump. Let me tell you something. This election would have turned out a lot differently had Barack Obama done anything like he should have. If he would have stopped the wars and taken that money and put it into infrastructure, stop the wars, taking that money and relieve student debt, stop the wars, or, hey, re-regulated Wall Street, broke them up and prosecuted those criminal motherfuckers. If Barack Obama would have did that, there'd be a different president right now. There'd be a different president. 
Barack Obama, you're supposed to use the bully pulpit. You're supposed to ch- steer the course of the country, and he didn't. This course he, he steered was a course for the banks, was for the oil companies, was for the military-industrial complex. We're now in more wars than when he, got in pres- when he took the presidency. So there you go. You're getting very worried about who it might be. Who's And someone's going to harvest 2010's Grapes of Wrath. That Michael Moore is a son of a gun, man. That guy, he's very prescient. He's really got his finger on the pulse of stuff. Which why it was weird to see him say all nice stuff about Hillary. So there you go. There you go. In 2010, Michael Moore saw this coming. And what did Hillary Clinton do? What did Barack Obama do? What did all the Democrats do? Stuck their head up their fucking ass. And now we have Donnie Tynahans. And and now Howard Dean wants to be the head of the DNC. Debbie Watson and Schultz didn't listen to what was going on in the country. Of course not. Steph, it's one big corporate system. It's one corporate cash system. And they're all, both parties are at the corporate trough and they're, and, and they couldn't be taking more money. It's all about how much corporate cash you can get. That's all it is. And then when you leave government, if you don't win your election, you go to work for a consulting. You go to work for a lobbyist. You go to, of course, that's what they do. Tom Dasha was supposed to be the lib, big liberal in the Senate. He left and he went to work for a health insurance company. They gave him $2 million. He came back when Barack Obama was trying to pass a public option and told everybody, don't pass the public option. You'll get millions of dollars like I did. All he had to do was, sh- you know what Tom Daschle's job was? Was to show up in Washington in a limousine with $2 million in his pocket. And he did it. And we don't have a public option. And Barack Obama's a colossal failure. And it was predictable. And that's why we got Trump. 